Thanks, Anne. Um, thanks for following up for the technical duties and things. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm very sorry not to be there. Uh, I uh, discovered last night that I'm positive on COVID. So I'm not in the best mood uh, at the moment because I'm really looking forward to seeing you, but we'll do it uh, online. And uh, if you do have any questions afterwards, please don't uh, hesitate to contact me, mail, uh, or just call me or whatever. Uh, I, I'm always looking forward to meeting up people and exchanging data. Now, uh, as for what we are doing in Antwerp at the moment, uh, as Olivia already explained, we are working more or less in the same way, yet a little bit different there and then. Uh, but let me first explain something about the structure uh, of the city of Antwerp. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Yes, thank you. Uh, so the city of Antwerp um, has, uh, has the privilege of working together. I think that's one of the main points that I have to add. Uh, in this presentation, uh, quite some years ago, uh, our uh, policymakers decided that the heritage organizations of the city of Antwerp should work together for a couple of things like um, transport between uh, for exhibitions or restorations, um, scenography and that kind of thing. So not not uh, every one of the 10 museums of the city of Antwerp and then some heritage institutions, we are working together and on that. Uh, and the other thing which we are working on together is, our, um, is the collections and how we are managing them and especially how we are trying to get them together and to get them online in such a way that the visitor can search all the collections in one, at one stage and not uh, that he has to go to each website and each collection separately, which is now the case. Um, so I think we have the advantage that we are sort of less obliged uh, to work together, which is not as easy as it sounds all the time, but which also does has advantages, of course. Now, as for the very diverse collections that we have in the city, you can see it on the slide. We have like Rubens, of course, I suppose you all uh, know Antwerp as the city of Rubens. Then we have the contemporary art of the Middelheim, we have uh, music instruments, there's ethnography, there's fashion, of course, in the Modern Museum, there are uh, jewelry in the, in the Museum for um, uh, Jewelry and Diamonds and so on. There's photography, um, we, we also have maritime heritage, like big, like really big ships, which are also protected heritage, so they're also part of the collection. So that makes it quite difficult to make this collection one part. Um, next slide, please. Yes, so and in, it, uh, in addition, um, we do not all only have museums which are working together. We also have archives, heritage, uh, ar heritage archives, which are also part of our cooperation. And then, of course, there's also the heritage libraries, li like uh, the Erfu Bibliothek Hendrik Conscience. I suppose most of you who are present there know uh, the library. I also saw one of the people. Uh, of uh, this institution in the room, so I'm sure uh, Natasha can answer questions if there might be questions afterwards. Uh, and all of these uh, institutions use separate uh, collection systems to make sure all their objects in the collection are registered and all changes are kept in one system. So we have a system for museums, we have a system for archives, we have a system for libraries, and then of course we have our uh, media management systems, we, we call it DAMS, Digital Asset Management System. So th these are actually four silos of collections data, of heritage data, uh, which are used throughout the, the heritage uh, institutions of the city of Antwerp, and it's even more complex than that actually. Next slide please. So uh, we do not have one museum system, actually we have three. Uh, in our city we use Atlip, we use TMS, we use QI. Uh, for the libraries we have two kinds of systems, for the archives there are also uh, two kinds of systems and that same goes for the media management system. So you can say we have, that's three, uh, well that's nine different kinds of systems and that's very complex, first of all, for our own people, but it's even more complex for our uh, online visitor who at the moment he just doesn't know where to start to find an object in the collections of the heritage institution of the city of Antwerp. So uh, quite a while ago we tried to find a solution for that, uh, but the main aim is, is as such, we want the external visitor to find all the information 
of the objects of the heritage institutions of the city and of Antwerp in one platform, one website or one app. So we did a little bit uh, what Olivia already explained a bit about. Uh, next slide, please. Um, we uh, decided that we would not use one system, which is a question that we got regularly, especially uh, from people who are not that acknowledged with uh, heritage. But it, to, us, to us, it just doesn't work because uh, one system is not, it doesn't work for our needs um, because it's, I'm going to explain. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to the next slide because I see the clock ticking. Then our data hub, um, what we're trying to do with our data hub is that we want to, um, we want to put all our data together in one place. And that place uh, means that we can um, all, add all data into this data hub and that we can extract the data from the data hub to another platform. So this is really an example of linked open data, you can say. Uh, and we can use it as such uh, to, as a sort of layer in between, to use our um, data and as such we can find them in one place. Yes, next slide, please. There you go. So this is what we call our eco uh, system. Our ecosystem is actually a three layered system. Uh, at the bottom, which is here at the left, uh, we have the, the different silos, as I just explained, which is, uh, for instance, Atlib or TMS, or for the libraries, it's Borcade. Um, so that's the left, or the f I see it as the base, the base of the, of the house, actually, which we are building. In the in-between layer, we have our data hub, which I will explain a little bit more about further on. And then at the right, or at the top, we have our publication of data. And it, we are working towards a system where this uh, layer, this top end layer, can uh, consist of several kinds of websites or apps or any kind of online system where we can publish our data. And all of these apps and webs websites uh, are actually are empty. You can see them as an empty layer. They don't hold any content. All the content has to be found underneath. It has to be found in the data hub, and in the data hub, it is extracted from the collection registration systems, which are even more underneath. So if we want to build an app, it's uh, actually, it's just a design, and it features the data which comes from beneath, but that's about it. Uh, I also have to add that in the way we are working within the hierarchy of the city of Antwerp, uh, my team uh, is working on, especially on, on the data hub, so that's the midst of the layers, and on the left side of the ecosystem, so on the, on the registration systems itself, we are not working on the publication of the data. We are not involved in making a website or an app. What we're trying to do is making sure that all the data is available so a, a website developer or a developer of an app can get a hold of all this data and can publish it in the system that he wants to use. Uh, okay, next slide, please. Yes, this is something uh, which Olivier already showed a bit, I think. This is CDOC CRM. So uh, we used, uh, or we decided a couple of years ago to use CDOC CRM as our language uh, to put together all of our data uh, in the in the silo underneath. Um, at first, we tried to use another standard, which is called Dublin Core. I'm sure most of them, most of you have heard about it, but it was not complex enough. So we switched to CDOC CRM. Uh, the advantage is it's international. Uh, it has been existing uh, for 20 years now. So we don't have to find everything new. There are models of CDOC CRM uh, for heritage which are already existing, so we can use a bit of them. Uh, it doesn't cover everything we need, so we also use linked art, which is also another kind of model or language, uh, if you wish. And then in the end, we end up with something like you can see on the slide. So we use with triples. Uh, I'm not a technic, technic person at all myself, so um, uh, if you have technical questions at the end, please ask Olivier or uh, let me know and then I can ask the, the people in my team to, to answer them. 
Um, but triples is a sort of construct in which you uh, use two kind of data and you put them together. And like that, you can everything you can you can split up your data and you can put them back together in one system, which is what we are using here in uh, CDOC CRM. And CDOC CRM, as, as Olivier already uh, explained, is um, more or less parallel with Oslo, which is the Flemish standard for um, data uh, uh, standard and modeling. At the moment, um, we have a little bit more than the thing you can see on the slides. I will show that later on. But the important thing here is that you also see that we are linking as much as possible to external authorities like AAT, like Wikidata, like um, VIAF, like ULAN, uh, you name it. Everything which we can find, which holds metadata in an international uh, controlled vocabulary, we try to use and to put it uh, into our data hub. Uh, yes, next slide, please. Yes. Uh, okay, doesn't matter. Uh, in the linked open data, we, we uh, really want to use Wikidata as much as possible. For instance, you can here see uh, an, a Wikidata page um, with an image. The image uh, is part of the collection of the Antwerp Museum Plantin Moretus. So they have uh, made sure the image is on Wikidata and as such the lemma on Wiki. Uh, on, on, on Wikipedia, refers to the image uh, which is part of the collection of Plantain Moretus. And if you see how much it's, it's clicked on, it's quite impressive. So you see that uh, um, vis uh, the, vis the visibility of your collection uh, increases like a million, well, not a million times, but a lot of times when you put something uh, on Wikidata. That's one, that's one of the first reasons uh, we try to use external vocabulary as much as possible. The other reason is, of course, far at the uh, and the third reason is to make sure that we can link our data together. Uh, yes, next slide, please. Yes, R next slide. <laughs> okay, um, so this is again our architecture, our ecosystem, if you want. So we have underneath, we have our, our silos, our collection registration systems. Up above, we have our data hub in which we use CDOC CRM and uh, above we have our top end of apps and websites uh, and so on. Uh, I also have to add that we're also working together uh, with our collection registrators quite extensively in the collection registration systems underneath because I think as you all know, uh, if your data are dirty or they are incomplete or they are not linked uh, with external uh, vocabularies and so on, um, it's really hard to use them. So we, also, uh, we, we, we communicate a lot with our collection registrators um, and we try to convince them of using the guidelines that we propose to, to register the data uh, to make sure everybody is more or less uh, registrating in the same way, which is quite something because I'm speaking about 10 uh, museums uh, for now at least. Um, at the same time, um, we are also uh, 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 making sure the legal aspects of the data is more or less covered because there is also something as copyright, of course, which also influences how you can put your data in public. Uh, so that's what's what's uh, happening underneath, uh, and in the midst we are working especially on this uh, mapping with CDOC CRM. Um, at the moment, uh, we are uh, more or less more or less ready with uh, about 15 fields, which we are mapping, uh, and we are preparing our first website in the top end uh, layer, which will be a very 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 simple basic search. Uh, which will make it possible to search in both Atlip, both Brocade and both uh, archive spaces and arches, which are the two systems which are used uh, for, uh, within the archives of the city of Antwerp, and of course our DAMS. It will be a very basic system. Uh, it will only search in about 15 to 20 uh, metadata fields which are coming from the collection registration systems. And it's also a bit of an experiment for us uh, to see how the data will be published in a website coming from all the system uh, underneath. Yes, next slide, please. Right, um, this is an example of how we are modeling our data. So this, for instance, um, is how we are modeling our data in 
which are uh, derived from ATLIP. So in underneath, you can see the fields which is we are extracting from ATLIP and how we are translating them into the CEDOC CRM system of triples. In the end, we always end up in this human-made object. So we, we choose the fields in ATLIP uh, and we translate them to the entities and the properties which are used in CEDOC CRM. Yes, next slide, please. And we are do, trying to do the same thing for some fields which are deriving from uh, the library system, Brocade. So this, these are, underneath you can see the Brocade fields, uh, which are also mapped towards uh, CDOC uh, CRM. That's a bit more difficult because CDOC CRM has mainly been designed for uh, data uh, which are rather uh, derived from museological systems, not so much from uh, um, libraries or archives. Um, but we're working on it and it's, uh, it's a good thing that the CEDOC CRM international group is also working on that. So they're, as we speak, they're also working on this uh, data mapping of, um, it's called FRBROO, I'm, I'm sure there's a derivation or the correct way to pronounce it, but it's sort of um, CEDOC CRM mapping for bibliographic data. So we're also using that one, of course. Yes, next slide. This is a typical example of uh, how Brocade is different than Atlip. Uh, Brocade, for instance, has an author and the author often has also has a role. So it's specified in another field uh, what the, the exact um, position of this author is. And we also have, uh, at the moment, at least we have also put this in our mapping of CDOC CRM. So in the end, it can be shown on the online platform. Yes, next slide. So uh, the demo is, uh, uh, I think it's the way of showing that it works, uh, which was quite important for us uh, because it's all very nice, of course, to have uh, a way of thinking about how are we going to do this. Uh, but I think if we, because we have put it together, that it's now, it shows that it works. It works uh, both for putting the data in a system uh, Overneath one city, uh, but it also shows that you can use it between two cities. And that's thanks to um, this CDOC CRM and um, uh, Oslo mapping, of course. Yeah. We are, so the, we have this data mapping, which, which we are doing in Antwerp. We are trying to put them together uh, with the data which we are doing uh, in Ghent. We will uh, make that make sure that we are uh, conferring about that quite often now we do um, we do see that we need input we can't we can't we can't do everything just with the two cities uh, it's even more two slides uh, further on it's a slide called onwards there we go um, so uh, to be honest we are looking a bit uh, at at the Flemish government um, I do hope that they uh, will put an effort in um, making sure that this Oslo mapping will proceed uh, and that there will be work groups and focus groups and so on uh, to complete and to extend this Oslo mapping so it can be used for the sector as a whole. Uh, there are other things which also should be mapped. Uh, for instance, intangible heritage is quite something which we are missing at the moment quite hard. Uh, and uh, it would be nice, uh, I do hope that if, uh, there, we, there could be some um, help and advice uh, from uh, the government of, uh, let's say, the Flemish uh, Department of Culture, which is a bit of a wish. Uh, I, and I hope it will be uh, a, 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 the future from now on. Yeah, it's, it's anyhow, it's really interesting because uh, at KBR, we also have these heritage uh, curators who say, ah, but we can't just fix everything with your bibliographic standard. We need a CEDOC CRM as well. So um, for us, it's also important to go cross domain.